guys, what's up and welcome to another empties video. I don't mean to sound so chipper. It's midnight. Why am I chipper? This is in no particular order and also the box is this big. I had to use a wicker basket from Ikea, um, which I usually use for my cubes and stuff, uh, because I couldn't find anything else big enough to hold all of this stuff. It's only been a few months, but I have used a lot of products. Most of these are lush. What a surprise. Um, but there are quite a few that aren't, so... Oh, what do I start with? Okay, shall we get the Lush products out of the way first? Because there's more of them than anything else. Uh, you'll be pleased to know I'm actually not replacing all the products that I've used up. I'm trying real hard to just cut down on the amount of Lush stuff. So yeah, I realise that I just, I, I have too much Lush stuff and I need to stop spending so much money in there. Um, so actually my collection is a lot smaller now. <laughs> Mostly because of this. Okay, so one of the first products that I used up uh, just after my last empties video is the American Cream Hair Conditioner. Uh, this is a one kilogram bottle and you can get this from Lush Oxford Street. So many people love the American Cream Conditioner. Why? It's not that good at all. See, everyone sees me as this massive Lushy that just loves every product. This did not make my hair feel soft at all. Not in the shower, not after a shower, not after I've dried my hair, not in the bath, nothing. This is just a really thin conditioner and my hair needs a big thick conditioner. So, I mean, the other thing is everyone says they love the smell of it. It reminds them of like vanilla and strawberries. I just, it's so overrated. Um, I got this because I was just riding on the hype of everyone saying how great it was, but I'm not really disappointed. And wow, what a way to start a video, right? Now this one, I do love. This is the daddy -O shampoo. I think this is the first bottle I've actually used up um, because I never keep my hair blonde enough long enough. Blonde enough long and good, yeah. Never keep my hair blonde long enough. There we go. Um, for me to get through a whole bottle. But as you guys know, I had, uh, I had blonde hair for like six months, which is long for me in terms of hairstyles. So basically this is what they call a purple shampoo. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a normal shampoo filled with loads of bright purple pigments. I mean, this stuff is like a really deep, you can't see it, but it's like a deep purple. Um, and what it's supposed to do is the purple goes onto like yellow brassy hair. You know when it's not platinum white, but it's kind of that kind of offy, off yellowy kind of thing? Yeah, it goes on that and basically sort of counteracts the yellow pigments because it's opposite, purple and yellow opposites on the colour wheel. Anyway, science. Um, it, it works. It works really, really well. Um, it's also a really kind of conditioning uh, shampoo. Some people say it's drying on their hair. I found this to be a really, really good shampoo just for keeping your hair intact. It's just really good for blonde hair. Um, and it just, it just worked. Um, you never really saw my hair be that yellow, I hope. Up next is a big tub of the Rub 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 Shower Scrub. I've spoken about this in other videos before. This is one of my all time favorite stuck on a desert island can only bring certain things products. I love Rub Rub Rub. Uh, the solid one is rubbish. This one, where you scoop it out, is great. I mean, it doesn't go too far because you scoop some and then the water goes in your hand and it all falls out your hand and down the drain. But when you can use it, this stuff makes your skin so nourished. This is like my, must be like my fifth or sixth tub, although I did usually get smaller tubs. Um, this one you can get from the Lush Oxford Street as well. This is like the size of my head. It's just really good. It just leaves your skin so soft. So silky soft, I don't know how. This is the Yummy 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 Shower Gel. I only used this up the other day. Um, I got this from the Lush Kitchen, uh, which is that exclusive website, can't get stuff in stores, products. I've explained that a million times. This uh, was strawberry scented. It smells like a really weak, like watered down strawberry milkshake. You know where they put too much milk in a milkshake? And it's just kind of, you're just kind of drinking milk, not strawberry. Kind of like that. Now my sister fell in love with this. She's eight years old. She loves strawberry. She loves pink. This is like a really light pink colored uh, shower gel and it's it's okay. I didn't really like the smell of it. Just like the American cream, just it was too weak. It didn't smell of strawberries or at least it didn't smell like fresh strawberries. You know, you smell like a punnet. That was really British. I'm so chipper about my punnet. It's just, it's, it was okay. I mean, it, it lathered up really well. Um, it created lots and lots of lather and it, it went really far, like, I couldn't get through this for ages, which is a good thing. Um, 
but it just wasn't really for me. It was kind of like a thick consistency as well, which I kind of find hard to, you don't need to envision that, do you? No. This is the Yummy Mummy shower gel, which sounds like the Yummy Yummy Yummy, but it's Yummy Mummy, not Yummy Yummy Yummy. This is for the Mother's Day collection that they did, and it smelled of lilacs, and it was the most hideous smelling thing I've ever had. Now you guys know that usually I try to pick up a lot of exclusives from Lush, because I like doing sort of full collections for people on YouTube to watch so that they know what there is and what they smell like before they go out and buy them and when I was in the store I smelt it and I was I think I was getting confused by other aromas because I was like yeah that's nice I think and I got it home and it just smelled rank I hated it it's my least favorite shower gel I can't even remember if this lathered up too well I don't think it really did but all I know is the smell was so off-putting it's just lilacs man don't do that oh it it's just coloured lilac, but it's made of geraniums. Doesn't smell of lilac, it smells of geraniums. Shut up, I know my flowers. Look, no. not nice. Lush, don't bring that back. It was rank. Next we have the Back for Breakfast shower gel. I, it took too many takes for me to say breakfast. I don't know why. This is another one from the kitchen, which I've mentioned before. This is one of my all time favorite shower gels. I love this so much. It's so lemony and it just, this is amazing to wake you up with. Um, again, it is from the kitchen, which means you can't get it in stores, which sucks, they need to listen to people. But if you can get hold of this, I would absolutely recommend it. Um, it's honestly one of my favourites. It's such a nice lemon scent. It's not too strong, but it, you know, in, in the hot shower, it kind of gets up your nose and you are awake. I mean, I'm not. I'm always asleep, but... For everyone else, you are awake! Next up we have the Prince Charming Shower Gel and this is one of the weirdest smelling things I think Lush has ever done. I still can't work out if I love it or hate it. To me, and like no one else, it smells like Turkish delights. You know, the, the, the chocolates you get and that nice bit in the centre, it smells like that. I think I've spoken about this before because this is from the Valentine's range. And I think I made a video on it, um, but this is just... I think I like it, I can't tell. This is one of the thickest shower gels Lush does. It will go a very long way and it takes ages to, to get out of the bottle, especially when you're near the bottom. But, really good. Lathers quite well from what I remember. Not the most lathering, but it feels really good on the skin. You end up with like really soft, smooth legs and it's, it's all good. And you smell like Turkish Delight, so... Yeah! This is the beautiful shower gel. Now this is supposed to smell of peaches. And I was so excited when I heard about it. I was like, oh, I love peaches. I love eating those those peach sweets you can get, those peach gummies. They're like my favorite sweets ever. I was so hyped. But I got it home and it just doesn't smell like peach at all. It says it has apricot infusion. It doesn't smell like apricots to me either. Actually, does it smell like apricots? Oh, it does a little bit. It smells more like apricots than it does peach. I will say about this shower gel and about the one that I'm about to talk about, this, it's very weird in its consistency. You, you get it out, and it's on your hand, and then you rub it, right? But you, you end up with like, sort of blobs where it's sort of still, sort of formed. But then other bits of sort of, you know, lathered and all that, but you end up with like, thick patches. It's a really weird blotchy shower gel. I just don't think they got the consistency right. Although this is, you know, this was made like, back in April. So maybe like, cause it was brand new back then, maybe they've got it, they've made it better now, but it's just, it's really uneven and it feels really weird. It takes ages to scrape it back off your leg and try and do it again, you know. Um, and that is the same for the Wash That Man Right Out Of My Hair shower gel. This is usually bright red in colour. This is also from Lush Oxford Street and I absolutely hate the smell of it. I got this because I wanted to do that full uh, Lush Oxford Street haul and I picked up every shower gel going and you'd think You'd think that I'd like this because it's got lavender infusion and if you know me, you know I love my lavender. I need to put that on the shirt, I say that in every freaking video. You'd think I'd like it, but it's also got jasmine infusion and even though I love lavender, jasmine is one of my least favourite smells. Any bath bomb that has jasmine as the main scent, I just don't like. I'd, I'd... Why jasmine? Why not lavender? It smells like something you wouldn't want to put on your body. I just, I don't know. And the scent lingers with you all day. I just, I don't know. It certainly would wake you up in the morning. Like, does this smell? Like, you just want to, you don't want to, you're going to want to get out of the shower. It's lavender and jasmine infusion, rose petal infusion, and guava and fig juice. I don't smell any guava, although I don't really know what guava smells like. To me, it's just a bad mix. Some people love it. Look, it's staining my hand. Looks like I'm bleeding, I'm not. Shower gel. But I'm just not a fan of the smell. Thought I would be, but I persevere. 
okay? I could say, oh, I'm not going to finish this, but I get through it. Although there are a couple that I did give up on, which I will talk about. <gasps> the first products I didn't finish in an empties video. <gasps> Finally, for the shower gels, I saved the best till last. You know what it is if you watch my videos. Twilight shower gel. I finally got through one of the 10 bottles that I accidentally ordered. I think I've told that story. I ordered five because I was excited and then it said the payment didn't go through and I didn't get an order number. And I was like, I'm gonna have to order again. And I did and then both the orders went through. So I ended up with 10 bottles. I ended up giving like one to my mom and one to Luke and I think one to my dad, just cause I was like, I love these. You should experience them cause I'm just hoarding them. This numero uno product of all time. The consistency is perfect. The scent is glorious. It leaves your skin silky smooth. It's perfect for when you need to sort of go to sleep. Just a million out of 10. Oh. Here we go again. There is no other product that does this to me, honestly. Like, I, I never, I thought I knew what a smellgasm was till I smelled Twilight shower gel. This is somewhat sweeter than the bath bomb that you can get. The bath bomb's kind of more of a sort of a dull kind of, I don't know, it's, it's more of a lavender based bath bomb, but this uh, is mixed with tonka and tonka really brings out these really sweet notes at the end when you smell it. Can you tell I'm just really freaking passionate about this? I know how this smells, I know all the ingredients. It's so conditioning, because it's got like three types of oil in it. If I could just bathe in this, just this, no water, I think I probably would. I have a matching liquid perfume, a matching solid perfume, I've tried the bath bombs. I'm just, you know, lush. Please do a twilight body lotion. Why are you not doing that? Imagine a twilight body lotion where you could just get out the bath and smell of it before you go to bed. I'm gonna stop. Amazing product, get it if you can. Again, that's Lush Kitchen only, except if you get the Relax gift set from Lush in any store, they've got a tiny little like 100 milliliter sized um, bottle of it, which is not enough and you will be hooked forever. I think we should move on to the shower jellies. I have three shower jellies. This is the Santa's Belly Shower Jelly. Um, I got this quite recently. I got this when they first started doing the Christmas stuff in Lush Oxford Street. This is now in every store, but it is gonna go out of stock soon because it's a Christmas exclusive. And it smells of the So White Shower Gel and Bath Bomb. Shower gel you can't get anymore. I was really upset and had to go to eBay and buy one. Um, but they still do the uh, bath bomb. So if you know what that smells like, crisp apples and cider vinegar, it just smells incredible. Just that smells exactly the same. It's red in colour, it has these like edible stars in, although don't eat any, even though they say edible stars, don't eat the stars because they have been in SLS. It's not good, you will end up with bubbles on your tongue. Oh, it's incredible. This is like my second favourite product behind uh, Twilight. I love the So White scent, it's one of my faves. This shower jelly though, um, it doesn't go very far. Some of the shower jellies are really stubborn. You run them under water or anything, they just will not crumble. This one, you run it under water and it kind of just melts away, kind of, just sort of crumbles and um, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not made to last, which is a shame, because they should, because it's going out of, st anyway, I'm gonna stop talking. It's really good. Get this while you can. It's a really good one if you like apples. I love me some apples. Anyway, this is the Nightwing shower jelly and it is shaped like a bat. It is dark black in color, kind of like a really deep purple, but mostly black. It's shaped like a bat and it stains your hands a lot. Anytime you want to scoop it out and just see what it looks like, bam, purple hands. But I mean, it's okay if you're in the shower because it just runs off. But don't pick this up if you're not in the shower. This smells like lime fruit pastels, if you've ever had them. Just really, really sweet lime. You know those sweets where they're just lime? Yeah, it doesn't last too long. I mean, it'll just, you'll notice it just gets smaller and starts crumbling away after a while. Um, which sucks, but it is really nice. If you can still get this, then do. I'd recommend it. It's okay, it's, it's good. It's just, it's not like an amazing standout. Why are we still on Lush? This is the Deep Sleep Shower Jelly. Now this one was a Lush Kitchen exclusive and I got it because it smelled of all of my favorite things. It has orange juice, lavender oil, and chamomile oil, and lavender absolute, and neroli oil, which are, they're, all of those things are amazing. It's got some other rubbish stuff in, like sunflower petals and carrageenan. I can't pronounce that, whatever. It smells really lovely. It smells nothing like Twilight. It's got that hint of lavender, but it's, 
It's really overpowered by the chamomile and orange. You can smell both of those at the same time. It's kind of like a really good herbal tea smell. Unlike the other two that I was speaking about, this one goes so far. I, like I said, with big ones, I cut them into cubes and then I put a few cubes under running water. These would, they just, they just would not melt away. You get so many bubbles out of these. I can imagine if you actually use this as a shower jelly on your body, you would be battling with it for weeks before you could get rid of it. It's really, really good. I actually got two of these. I think I've already used one. No, actually I haven't used the other one up yet, um, but it's really, really good. So if you can get it, if it comes back in the kitchen, then do if you like the things that I described because I love them. Okay, I've got two little tins. Um, these are usually just samples given out by staff when you're in the store and they're like, hey, you spent all of your day and all of your money in here, so have a little tin. Um, this is the Gorgeous Facial Moisturizer. Now, Gorgeous is notoriously the most expensive, like, moisturizer you'll ever find in Lush. It's usually at £42 for a tub that's, like, that big. £42. I got it for my mum for Mother's Day, and I will be so mad if she's just scooping it and slapping it on. Mum, better not be. However, I will say that while it is overpriced, it is a very good moisturiser. It's really softening on the skin. I'm not a massive fan of the smell of it. I can't remember what it smells like actually, but I just know I'm not really a massive fan of it. Yeah, it's kind of sweet. Kind of a like vanilla note to it. Um, but I'm, I wasn't a massive fan of it. My favourite is Vanishing Cream. That smells of lavender. <laughs> I'm surprised. Um, but it will leave your skin so silky smooth. If you can go, you're like, next time you're in Lush, Try and get a sample of this, like say that you're really interested in buying it and just be like, hmm, I'd love to try this out. Could I possibly get a sample? And then just like, <laughs> reloading? Uh, don't, don't do that. <laughs> oh, whatever, this is free country, right? Whatever. And this is the new Charity Pot Hand and Body Lotion. I think this one was made like two years ago because I saw it on my shelf. I was like, I'll start using that up. And it's gone like this really weird brown thick color. I don't know why think it had gone out of date, or it was a really weird mix, I'm not sure, but I didn't like the smell of it. I don't know what the smells of, but the charity pot, it's the new charity pot, not the old one, I just don't like the smell of it, and it's really thick and weird, although it might have just been the one that I had that went wrong, so don't judge new charity pot on that, but that was really gross to use, but I was like, I'm gonna persevere, damn it. Next up we have the Vanilla D Light Body Lotion. This took so long to get through. This is like a 100 gram bottle, which is tiny, and it took like, weeks of like daily use to get through this. I'm not kidding, it goes so far. Smells very, very strongly vanilla. I suppose it would have to be, otherwise they wouldn't call it vanilla delight. They'd call it somewhat vanilla, but not really, don't really know what it is delight, but they didn't. It's also kind of got that standard lotion smell, like you can pick that up as well, but it's mostly vanilla. Yeah, it's, it's nice, it's not my favorite lotion. My, my favorite I think is Sympathy for the Skin. That's a really good one, it smells of bananas. Um, well, it's made of bananas, it smells a bit like bananas. Um, but yeah, this isn't my favourite, but I, I needed to get through it because it expires... Hey, next month! I did good! This is the Marilyn Hair Treatment. Now, some people love this, some people hate this. Uh, there are some, like, really well-known bloggers that say this is the worst product they've ever put in their hair. I don't know what they were talking about! Like, this is so good. I mean, granted, I use this when I was bleach blonde, and you're supposed to. It says, with your bleach blonde or natural, you'll want to keep brassy orange tones from building up in your hair. Um, I didn't find that it, uh, that it counteracted, use my brain, uh, I didn't find that it counteracted the brassiness in my hair or anything. Um, but, I mean, it worked really well as a hair treatment. It's kind of like a really thin hair treatment. Um, you try and scoop it on your head, but you're kind of slopping it back on. It's not very thick, but it was really nice. I didn't like the smell of it, if I remember. It's okay. It smells like an old cookie. It's made of chamomile infusion and saffron infusion and lemon juice and olive oil and lemon oil and chamomile oil and oil, 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 I'm gonna stop. Supposed to leave this on for 20 minutes. Just leave this on for the whole time you're in the bath and your hair is just gonna be really nice and soft. I, I use this in like, like three goes. Like you can, you can get way more than three, but I just, I just, I'm a hedonist. I slap everything on. Next up we have the Veganese Hair Conditioner. I think I've spoken about this in the past. It's just absolute, crap. <laughs> Sorry, but it really is. I hated this. None of the Lush hair conditioners work for me. Not one of them. Just don't like them. They just don't work. I don't know why I had a small bottle of this. I don't ever remember picking this up, but I guess I did for like a tester or something. Just mm, says it gives you lots of shine and softness. 
I didn't feel that in the shower, I didn't feel that after a shower, didn't feel that when my hair was dry, just nothing. Felt really unconditioned and kind of dry. I think it just, it's maybe just not for my hair type or something like that, because some people have massive successes with veganese. I just, I haven't found any conditioner from Lush that's actually worked, which is a real shame, because I would love to switch over to Lush for like everything, because because bunnies, yeah, just not great for me. But don't let that put you off because so many people say this is like one of their favorite products. So I don't know, maybe I just don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe I fill my hair and it's all a freaking lie. And the last bottle is the Happy Happy Joy Joy Conditioning Hair Perfume. All I can think about is Ren and Stimpy. Happy, happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy. Anyway, this is the worst smelling thing I've ever smelled. Apart from that yummy mummy thing, that was way worse. This is a hair perfume, meaning the smell stays with you all day. I hate it, it just smells of like flowers I don't like. There must be something in here that is similar to that that I don't like. Geranial, which I guess is from geraniums, maybe that's it. Rose oil, not a fan. Rose wood oil, not really. It's got like loads of things that I would like. It's got like orange flower, but it's just, I think it's just too flowery for me. It's like rose water. Just, I'm not a fan. Some people love it, some people hate it. I found that it didn't even condition my hair slightly. I was pouring loads of this on my hair just to get it to kind of resemble what conditioned hair felt like. Just not for me. And it's really expensive, this stuff. It's like 31 pound for like, I think for the bigger bottle, it's like 31 pound. Some people love it, some people hate it. I hated it. Wow, I am moany tonight, huh? Next we have the Let the Good Times Roll Face and Body Scrub. Uh, well, they call it a cleanser. Um, basically, it's like this really thick, like really, really thick dried out paste. You scoop some out, you put it in your hand, get a little bit of water on your other hand and then rub it in and you make like a paste. This smells of popcorn because it's made of maize and it's really, really fine. So when you rub it in, you're really getting into your pores, but it's a gentle scrub. So it doesn't sort of do any damage. And a lot of you guys were kind of yelling at me over the internet when I said use that St. Ives scrub on your face. I have since learned that you should probably not use the St. Ives scrub on your face because it's really harsh. This is natural and it doesn't cut up your face, which is really great. Although they give you like little bits of popped popcorn, which you can't do anything with. I don't know why they put that in. Aesthetic? It's just silly. If I can't eat it, I don't want it. Now the next two products um, are kind of interesting because they're no longer being done by Lush for a certain unique reason. These are the candles that Lush Oxford Street did um, and I was lucky enough to get these when they first started doing them, when they first opened. This is the Inhale candle. Can't really remember what any of these smell like because they're completely burned out. And this is the Vanilla Brulee. Um, now, they started doing these in Oxford Street um, when they first opened, they did them for like two weeks or so, and then they got recalled. Can you imagine why? Because I made a freaking bamboo. Don't put candles in plants. You will have people saying that they set fire. Anyway, apparently there's only like one person that complained, but for health and safety they were like, pull it! Um, and these have never come back. Um, the vanilla brulee one I remember smelling quite sweet, and the inhale I can't even really remember but I do remember that neither of these carried a smell very far at all. Like I'd have these on like in the bath or just on a windowsill in the living room and just the smell just never filled the room, filled the room, filled the room. They melted really well, like they burnt really evenly, but unfortunately just didn't smell. And set fire to things is the main problem here. And the last two products I saved because they're a little bit different. These are empties but I didn't finish them. I actually just got rid of the products in them because I actually could not stand them. I couldn't finish them. And I never do that. You know, there are some things I dislike, but I keep using, you know, like the yummy mummy. I just, I, I truck, I just, I just kept on trucking. But these two, these are the worst things I've ever put on my face, ever. And some people love them and I don't understand how. This is the Otifix face mask. Now some of you might be going, <gasps> this is a great product. You're putting porridge on your face. It's uneven. You just end up with this sort of really weird watery mix with like some random oats clumped on your face. It's not moisturizing. It doesn't stick on your face. It just feels sticky. Just microwave some porridge and put it on your face. You're doing the same thing. It's the, the worst thing. You just think, because it's got bananas in, you'd think I'd like it, but no. Just rubbish, 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 rubbish. I think I used this like twice before giving up on it because it wouldn't stay on my face. What's the point in a face mask if it doesn't stay on the face? Sorry Lush, you know, you have my heart, but it's crap, really crap. However, this, this next product, oh, it sticks to the face. It sticks to the face real good. 
but the smell made me want to... Honestly, I've smelled some bad things. I've, I've smelled some things I don't like. This certain product smells of the thing that it makes you want to do. It honestly does smell of it. It's the... Oh. It is the Brazened Honey Face Mask. Now, I was... Someone suggested this to me, like a sales lady. She has steered me so wrong. It was the worst, worst thing. Ugh. The smell, just thinking about it. In fact, I'm going to open it now. It smells of a really raw, thick honey and just other things that mix with it. You know when you do the gross thing and it smells kind of sweet? That horrible sweetness to it? what it is. You gotta put that on your face and leave it? No sir. I managed to hold out for like five minutes before just being like nope. And I didn't even think about whether it conditioned my face or not because I was just too busy trying not to feel the repercussions. I'll read out the ingredients because you might like it. Uh, kaolin, talc, lime juice. There is no lime juice, let me tell you. Rosemary and juniper berry. Free range eggs. That's nice. Not even vegan. Honey. Well, yeah, I did say it wasn't Vegan. Fresh fennel, almond shells, almond oil, bentonite gel, ginger root, parsley, coriander, turmeric, cardamom, clove bud oil, ginger oil. All of the things that are just, they just make the worst product on the planet. And there it is. Very ew. Lush, you did bad. Very bad. Get rid of it. Take it off the shelves right now. You're doing everyone a favour. Ew. And you thought that was the end of the video, right? Huh. No. I have more stuff that's not lush. Could make it two videos, but I'm on a roll. It's all good. First up, nice and easy. Pack of cleansing wipes from Boots. They smell of cucumber. I love the cucumber range from Boots. It's the best thing on the planet. I use the facial toner. I use a moisturizer. I use this eye gel stuff. Just the smell of the cuc... I love cucumber. I don't understand people that don't like it. Anyway, these work really well to take off makeup, although I don't really use makeup wipes to take off makeup now. I just kind of use them to sort of refresh the face when there's no makeup on it. You know, just, just give it a wipe. Get some of that gross oil off the face. They work real good, and they're cheap. Bootsline brand. Get them now. Hashtag not spawn. Now, speaking of being sad to bunnies, I was given this. My dad got it for me from Boots one time. Um, didn't choose to pick this up, but I did use it because, you know, it's there now. It's done and you funded it. Um, this is the Herbal Essences, uh, Essences Hello Hydration Deep Nourishing Intensive Mask. Now, I will say that... Um, this is a great product. Obviously, it is by Herbal Essences, and they are owned by Clairo, which is owned by something, something P and G. That's that's who Procter and Gamble, bad guys, bad bunny people. It's a really, really good product. All of the bunny ones are good. It's so annoying. It smells good. It's really, honestly, really repairing. Like I know you can't actually repair a split end because you're gonna kind of glue it together and it's just gonna break again. You need to get it cut if you've got a split end. But like. For the temporary kind of fix that it does, it leaves your hair feeling so soft and so smooth. You just put this on between shampooing and conditioning, leave it for like 10 minutes. I leave it for longer. It smells of coconut, which I don't usually like, but I just remember this smelling really good. Yeah, it smells really, really good. Um, I can't really recommend a sort of uh, a hair mask that does similar things that I can guarantee doesn't hurt bunnies. But obviously this is owned by P&G and they do do things like that. But if you're if you're if you're someone who's not concerned about bunnies and that's fine, your choice, I'd recommend it. It's it's really good. Oh, this is a deodorant. This is a Dove Go Fresh uh, antiperspirant spray thingy, compressed, so it's a smaller can. Um, this is uh, the company's Unilever. So again, bunny thing. But I had this for so long. I think I've had this for like two years. These things just don't ever run out. And I never used to really care about stuff like that, so from a long time ago, just so good. I've got to be honest, like, I don't really use, like, need to use deodorant, unless, like, I really smell and people aren't telling me. Um, I just, I never really smell, so I hardly ever use deodorant, but this is really good for when you do need to use it. Um, really blocks up those pores, which is not good. If you ever wonder why you sweat out your face more when you've got deodorant on, it's because you've blocked that way, so it's trying to find another way, so it's going to go through your face. Top tip. So yeah, try not to use too much of it. Also, atmosphere and bunnies. I think we're onto bunny free stuff now, I think. Oh no, we're not. No, we're not. This is the Garnier Micellar Cleansing Water and you can see another one in the back because these were on offer. Um, 
I got these quite a while ago. They last a long, 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 long time. I saw Garnier and Garnier and I was like, Garnier, they're good. So unfortunately, it just so happens this is the best cleansing water I've ever used. There's just none that are better. This really is good for taking stuff off your face. I always remove my makeup by putting it on like cleansing pads now. I never use makeup wipes, don't pull on the face. Just pat it on your face and then give it a wipe with a fresh cotton pad. Bob's your uncle. It's great, your makeup just falls off your face. It's wonderful. This is honestly one of the best and it's really cheap as well. I think they're like four pound and I promise you this goes such a long way because you're only using like a couple drops of the water each time. So that's why I've had this for so long and that's why that one is like I mean, like, a th like, not even a third of the way through, jeez. I think now we're on to the bunny free stuff, I think. Maybe not. I don't know, everything is so hard. I got so much of this, like, a long time ago, and I don't know. Now I sort of do my research, you know, so I, I don't buy the stuff in the first place. Anyway, this is a fantastic conditioner. Now, this is, like, a hidden gem that I found in Boots. This is by Tantrum. Um, and it's an apple conditioner. I love apple shampoo and conditioner. I love the smell of apple so much. Um, and this is a My Grown Up Apple Conditioner. This is for kids. But it's so nice and even says not testing on animals. Thank you for not being testing on animals. It just smells so good. It's kind of like an artificial apple, but I'm okay with that. It's just, it's so nice. Allergen free fragrance as well. So, um, should be good for a lot of people. Lots of ingredients that I can't pronounce, but Really good conditioner, really cheap, not testing animals, get it in boots. This is the Luminous Colour Conditioner, and this is vegan, and it's not testing on animals. Um, I think the story of how I got this is really weird. I got a shampoo and conditioner set from my old network. I used to be with uh, a YouTube network, and um, this was actually sent to Cherry, my friend Cherry, and uh, it's for coloured hair, and she wasn't colouring her hair anymore, so she didn't want it. So it just got left in the office and then I went there and they're like, hey, do you want some conditioner or something? I was like, yeah, I'll take it. It's all good. And um, it's really good. Um, I wouldn't say it. it's supposed to like protect your hair color. Um, it's not going to protect like these demi permanent dyes that I put on like, like directions and all that. Um, but I can imagine if you use like a permanent hair dye, this would work really well. Um, what does it do? I do know, I just forgot. It's midnight, let me know. Pomegranate extract and colour guard complex. Protect hair and reduce the loss of colour associated with washing, heat styling, UV rays and free radicals. Neat. It's a detangling conditioner, apparently. It's a good conditioner. It works just, it's, it's like a standard conditioner, you know. It, it's good, it's not fantastic, but it's vegan, it's cruelty free and it's supposed to protect your colour. So I suppose if you have permanent, like, hair dye, this would be really good. Oh, it's by Maria Neela. Maria Neela, you can't read that. Maria Neela. Now this one I did look up. This is another cleansing water that I got quite recently and I've used it all up already. Um, this is the N Spa Micellar One Step Cleanser and I did look it up and it said that it didn't test on animals as far as I remember because I wouldn't have picked it up otherwise, I'm pretty sure. Um, this is okay. It's not as good as the Garnier one, unfortunately. It worked okay, however, it says 84% of people agree this product is kind to eyes. No, it's not. No, it's not. With that micellar cleansing water, the Garnier one, if you get it in your eye, no biggie. It doesn't hurt. It's just water. It's all good. This stuff is like liquid death in your eyes. It stings. You will cry. Bunny death or eye death. You don't get a choice, apparently. And the next three products are kind of the stragglers of the group. They're kind of just bits and bobs. This is the Vanilla Berry Sorbet Pocket Back Antibacterial Hand Gel. Jesus Christ. Um, from Bath and Body Works. I got this like definitely last year at some point last year. I love Bath and Body Works, they smell so good. And they do these little like antibacterial hand gels that just, they have little like holders for them and they're just adorable. Um, I've got tons of them and this is just one that I picked up and I was like, I'm gonna use this one first. Can't remember what it smells like, alcohol probably. Mostly alcohol, but kind of berry, very synthetic berry. Not testing on animals. Yeah, Bath and Body Works, go you. I'm so happy about that, not testing animals. Get them if you live in America. Yeah. Now this is the weirdest looking product ever. I think this is definitely in the running for the weirdest product. Anyway, um, this is supposed to be a peach, right? Don't be dirty. Um, this was a hand cream by Tony Moly and I got this from Urban Outfitters a long time ago. It's completely empty as you can tell. Well, why else would it be in an empties video? Duh. It smelled better when there's actually product in it. Now it kind of smells a bit bleh. This is a delicious hand cream. It's honestly one of my favorite smells. It's peaches. I love peaches. 
I love them so much. It's so sweet and it's kind of like an artificial peach smell, but who cares? Who's judging? It's so nice. I don't know if Tony Moly do the bunny thing. I got this a long time ago, but really good. Really, really nice hand cream. It's not like a deep moisturizing one though. It's kind of like a thick kind of sits on your hand and doesn't really sink in kind of hand cream. You know, you feel it. You know, you feel a hand cream. You're just like, hmm but the smell of it just makes up for it completely. And finally, the last product is what I think is like the first makeup product I've ever sort of had on an empties video, and it is the, it looks full by the way, because you can't wash the uh, barrel out. This is the uh, Wake Me Up Anti-Fatigue Effect and Radiant Glow Concealer by Rimmel. Uh, I don't think Rimmel are nice to the bunnies, but I do own about 10 of these, because you just can't get through them. And the other annoying thing is, if they're not nice to the bunnies, is this is one of my all-time favourite concealers. I've used this solidly for about two, three, maybe, no, longer than that. Maybe like five or six years, actually. I've used this one. Not this one, <laughs> I mean like the, the, the type. It's just, the, when it says anti-fatigue effect, now I know I, I always say that nothing can be anti-fatigue, but it's got like, I think it must have like light reflecting particles in it because it really decreases the eye bags and I've got, I've got some eye bags. I use it here and here and here. I've got it on today. Look, there ain't nothing. I mean, that's, that's always there. I can't do anything about that, but it's just so good. It's honestly one of my favorite concealers. I think actually the favorite concealer, but it's Rimmel. I don't think they're nice to bun buns. I don't mean to be preachy, I just, I just feel like, you know, in this day and age, just, we've, we've, we've covered every sort of ground that makeup can do, every chemical that we can put on our face, we've pretty much tested. So why are we still poking things in bunnies? Anyway, that is my empties video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry it was so long. It's kind of an epic empties video. That'll be the title or something. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you have a lovely evening and I will catch you later. Goodbye. I'm tired. Can I go to bed? <sighs> <laughs>